Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Samantha Lee Wright, who is in, who is somewhere up the Appalachian Mountains in North Carolina. Yeah, Samantha? everyone says Appalachian, except for when you live here, we call it Appalachian. <laughs> Appala Appalachian, Appalachian, yes. Okay, good, good. Um, and, uh, and what we're going to talk about today is the biggest mistakes newbies make when starting a podcast and uh, why Samantha can talk about that subject. Well, uh, you, despite zero formal training, you launched a number one podcast that's reached over 5 million downloads. Um, so pretty impressive. So let's, uh, let's get straight into it, uh, into it, Samantha. What are some, starting back now, I think, I think the start of it is a lot of people feel like they should have a podcast now. It's kind of like it was with the blog a while ago or whatever. It's like, a, you know, content marketing. Oh, you know, got to, got to blog all the time, got to write articles. Now it's like, oh, got to start a podcast. And I don't think that's a good starting point is feeling like you have to do something or everybody else is doing it rather than actually have a good reason, purpose and, and, and plan for what you're going to do. Mm, well said. I could not agree more. You know, it's not like just starting a Facebook page or opening up a Twitter account. You know, starting a podcast is a lot of work. It should take some thought, some follow through, some planning. Um, and it takes a, you know, a decent amount of time and energy investment. It's relatively cheap, which is great. It doesn't cost nothing. It's not like just opening up a Facebook account. But um, so I would agree that if you aren't 100% in love with your own podcast, then don't start it. You know, that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is starting a podcast and creating it and not even enjoying their own podcast, you know, start a podcast that you would want to listen to. Uh, and that's a good place to start. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice. I never thought of it like that, but that's a great piece of advice is that, uh, yeah, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, because while it while it seems pretty straightforward from the outside, you know, yeah, you got your camera, you got your microphone, away you go. Uh, it's, it's a lot different when you start, you realize there's a lot more moving pieces and not just that, it's that, uh, is that you have to make it interesting. As you said, I mean, if you're not even interested in it, why should anyone else be? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Um, one of the biggest mistakes though, that this is something else I was planning to talk about was when people start out and they're starting a podcast, they tend to start out way too broad, you know, like you're not Conan O'Brien, just settled down, you know, like you, you, people tend to be like, Oh, I'll just start a podcast and we'll talk about whatever, you know, it'll be about this big giant topic and they don't niche down enough. So when you're just starting out, if you're starting from zero, or if you're a small business, you don't have a huge following that you're bringing along to your podcast platform with you, then you are going to give yourself a huge leg up. If you are to just niche down or what I like to call get a little weird, you know, really discover what is it about that you have to offer to the world. That's just weird enough or small enough that not everyone in the world could be interested in it, but the small amount of people that are interested in this one little thing are going to find you more easily and fall in love with you way more easily as well. Yeah, no, that's a great point because they're, they're more likely to love that subject more than most people would because it's a very niche one that they're, you know, that they're involved in. And I, I do think it's a really good point about, about going too broad to begin with. Um, I think that's the whole thing is one of the key parts is identifying who your target audience is going to be and i guess the other part uh, samantha is like is the is the reason for doing the podcast in the first place is it do you just want to do it for fun do you want to do it for brand awareness do you want to do it to derive leads um well, you know what's what's the purpose of doing it right that's one of the most important questions that you can ask yourself why so sometimes when i'm talking with my students i run a podcast academy and some of them get really stuck in the beginning. They're like, I just don't know what this podcast should be about because they have so much to offer the world. I have people that are so multi-talented, you know, lots of people are interested in many things and have so much to offer. So sometimes I ask them first and foremost, well, Hey, how do you think you want to make money with this podcast? Do you want to just 
reach as many people you can to get random sponsors, or do you want to offer your own product? And oftentimes people are like, oh yeah, I've always wanted to create this online course about X, Y, Z. And I say, great, stop, start there and now work your way backwards. What kind of people do you want buying that product? And what kind of content would those people want to listen to? So that's some questions you can sometimes work backwards and help yourself narrow down a little bit. So it doesn't feel so overwhelming. Like you're trying to start the next podcast that has, you know, millions and millions of viewers. You don't need millions of viewers to have a successful business and to have a successful podcast. No, no, absolutely. And I think, uh, and I think one of the other parts then is figuring out your, your format, because I think some people see, wow, look at, uh, well, look at Joe Rogan does long form podcasting. Maybe I should do long form podcasting. Um, but that may not be your, the interest of your, of your particular audience. You may not have the skill to do long form podcasting and you also have to find guests or subjects that could uh, fit with that. So I think also the format, you know, are you going to do something short and snap? Are you going to do something long and informative? Is it going to be very visual or is it going to be very conversational? There's a lot, there's a lot of uh, criteria to look at. Exactly. And there's no one way to do it. And really the only true answer that you can get for those kind of questions is ask yourself first, what does my audience want? And then second, what am I capable of? So I give the example of, you know, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, one of the oldest podcasts of all time, one of the top rated podcasts, most famous podcasts of all time. He only produces like two or three episodes per year. And, but these episodes are four to six hours long each, right? There's these, they're super detailed, long, long form, deep dives into these historical events that are heavily researched and things like that. And so, yeah, he only produces, you know, two to three episodes per year, still wildly successful versus let's say a horoscope podcast that's doing, you know, five minute long episodes every single day, because it's like, Hey, it's your daily horoscope. They don't want to make it too long. And they probably in all likelihood couldn't create a, you know, an hour long episode every single day around a horoscope. So what does your audience want from you and what can you realistically deliver? That's how you find those kind of answers. Cause there's no one box for podcasts. Yeah. And I was just thinking an hour long horoscope one. I mean, how could you be that vague for an hour? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. The, the other part, too, is I think people also get overwhelmed by the technology aspect of it. Right. You know, so uh, maybe uh, and it may be even the hardware. So they run out and buy expensive microphones and lighting and cameras and all of that without really, you know, s stepping back for a moment and asking, like, what is what is the essence of this? Pub? What are people really looking for here? And maybe I should start. I mean, there's a lot of good, cheap options out there. Maybe I should start cheap and actually practice a little bit and see if I like it before I am, you know, invest in sure microphones. Right. Exactly. I mean, doesn't everyone want to sure? Yeah. Um, yeah. And <laughs> you know, first, right. <laughs> so shout out to sure. If you happen to hear right. this, you can, you know, get send us some money. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, not supported by sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll first say that when you first start podcasting, you don't have to also video podcast. You can just do audio. In fact, like when I hopped on here, I was like, oh my God, my hair looks terrible today because I, my podcast personally is just audio. And I do that for a reason. When you take out video, you strip away like 90% of the hard work. You don't have to worry about lighting, camera, makeup, hair. I mean, especially for women, like, you know, I look like crap and this, I, you know, hopefully people are listening and not <laughs> watching, but it really cuts down a lot of uh, complications when you just focus on the audio. So that's one thing you can consider doing if you're a little intimidated by the tech side of things. If you strip out the video, then really all you need is a decent quality mic. No, you don't have to get the $500 microphone. I started out with a $40 ATR 2100. I think they've upped the price since I started podcasting. I think it's like 80 or $90 now, but, um, you know, a simple USB mic that plugs into your computer and, Another piece of advice when you're shopping for mics is shop for a dynamic microphone, not a condenser microphone. Dynamic microphones are going to be a lot more um, forgiving, let's say, when it comes to your recording area. So if you don't have a professionally 
created sound booth in your home, then buy yourself a dynamic microphone instead of a condenser microphone. So that it, long story short, the way that your mic, your voice gets picked up, um, is just a little more forgiving on a dynamic mic and it still sounds great. Um, and you know, if you want to get in your closet full of clothes, instead of your hardwood floored office, you're going to get a better sound quality as well. And that's something you can consider. Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, and, and I think there's so many simple ways of doing that. And I think that's a great piece of advice, though, is is starting with audio. Uh, the other thing is probably if you decide to go into video, you might want to ask yourself, um, last Zoom meeting I was on, how was I? Did I like it? Do I like being on camera? Because a lot of people actually think it's great until they suddenly on camera and they're seeing themselves and they're just going, whoa, that's, I don't look like that. I don't sound like that. <laughs> you know, like back in the, yeah. well, probably before your time, back in the old days, we first heard ourselves taped on tape and you go, I don't sound like that. And everybody goes, yeah, you do. <laughs> exactly. There's a word for that. It's called voice confrontation. Everyone hates the sound of their own voice. Uh, and there's an interesting scientific reason for this. I don't know if you've, you've heard this before, John, but uh, the way that we hear our own voices when we talk is we hear it through the vibrations of, you know, basically the bones in our head. And it gives us this kind of nice lower tone. So we all think we sound like, sexy and deep like this because that's how we hear it oh. so then when we hear ourselves on a recording and we're hearing it through the recording now it's going through our ears instead of the conduction through our head we we hear what we actually sound like which is inevitably a higher sound so we all think we hear ourselves and we all sound like mickey mouse to ourselves oh. um because of just that voice confrontation so you're not alone and it should absolutely not stop you from following your dreams and starting a podcast yeah, that's really interesting. But it's like, um, so a professional photographer told me this recently as well is when you look at yourself in the mirror, your your eyes and that play tricks on you and that fixes everything. The best view, here's a bit of a tip for everyone. If you want to get the best view of yourself is catch yourself accidentally in a shop window and that's what you look like. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, that's better. <laughs> Yeah, but they said that's because that's a pure vision of actually what you look like and your mind wasn't ready for it. So it doesn't trick you. But anyway, <laughs> that's, that's interesting. That's an, that's an, that's, an, that's an, just an interesting aside. Um, but I think I think the other thing, too, is then and I think this is not just true of podcasting. It's just basically true of everything. I think sometimes people get so excited about doing something that they expect things to happen so much faster than they're going to. And the reality is, I mean, you're going to build a successful podcast, whatever success means to you, it's going to take time and probably going to take longer than you think. I couldn't agree more. It took me over a year before I really saw any sort of substantial income from my podcasting endeavor. And that, that first year, even though I had relatively quick success. I became number one in my category within weeks. It still was just this constantly moving forward, constantly moving forward, even though it was a struggle. So, you know, give yourself a good year of consistency of consistently showing up, publishing that content on a regular basis. Um, and, and see where you are then and be smart about it. There's so many different ways that you can monetize a podcast. It doesn't all have to do with just numbers, downloads, sponsorships. Um, there's so many creative ways that you can use podcasting to be a bridge between you and your market or your brand. Um, and I'm sure you, you talk about that all the time, being a CRM master, just the importance of building that trust, uh, delivering that value, and then capturing it. Right. And then converting that into a loyal follower or customer. Yeah, no, and, uh, absolutely. And, and I think that's um, I think that's a really key point there is that there are many different ways of measuring success. And, and sometimes things take I mean, I have podcasts from I don't know, three or four years ago that didn't really attract much viewing. And then I looked at them recently and like, wow, they've suddenly been viewed a ton of times, you know, a couple of years after they were released. So you can't, you know, sometimes you can't legislate for these things. But I think it's it's a really important point is really define what success looks like for you. And obviously that will evolve over time. But certainly at the beginning, you should have some kind of idea of what, what you're looking for. Yeah, I love that advice. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some so so when people actually get up and they get going, OK, they've got their equipment, they've got their idea, they start off. Um, 
it's always exciting at the beginning, but there's always that kind of motivation dip or something or the reality and something's like, oh, why am I even doing this? It's all too much. Um, when you work with your stu with your students, how do you help them get through that piece? Because it's very exciting, maybe do the first couple and then maybe the reaction isn't what you expected. So you're all deflated. Yeah, well, this kind of brings us full circle back to that that first thing I talked about of starting a podcast that you yourself would enjoy listening to, because if you would enjoy listening to it, then you're way more likely going to enjoy actually making it as well. So when you're choosing what your podcast is going to be about, first and foremost, make it about something that you can talk about for years and years to come, if that's the kind of podcast you want to want to do. But I also try to open people's minds and let them know, Hey, you don't have to create a podcast that is ongoing. Maybe you're super into this one thing or this one story that you just feel really passionate about. And you want to tell that story, tell that story, and then give it an ending, put it out there as a finite podcast, just a podcast that people can listen to for, you know, one season. And then if it turns into something bigger, Hey, you've just built yourself a little reputation. You've built yourself a brand. Maybe you create a second season a year later, or you just use that platform, take that audience over to like a completely new project or new idea. So that's one, one approach that I try to have some, some students who they're like, oh, you know, I just, this is a lot of investment. I don't know how long I want to, you know, do this for. I'm like, don't, you know, stop, just, just give it a, give it a little ending. Um, but for, for those that have ongoing podcasting, I've been, I've been doing my podcast for over seven years and I still have fun with it because I intentionally created it that way. I created an interview based podcast first and foremost. I love talking to people. I love asking questions way more fun than this, this way where you're asking me questions. I just love, <laughs> you know, really diving into people's stories and their knowledge. And I enjoy polishing the podcast. I really enjoy turning it into, you know, kind of a polished piece of what I consider art um, in the end. And I, I still haven't tired of my subject matter. So all those things matter a lot. You have to have fun with it um, in the beginning, or you certainly won't last for years to come. Yeah, and I think that's a, I think that's a great point. And you know, going back to the format again, you know, whether you choose to talk yourself, whether you choose to, I don't know, have video behind you and you're talking about that, or whether you're you're doing uh, interviews. But I think that the point again, then I think is once you make that decision, is the is the preparation. But I think if you're going to do interviews, particularly you're going to engage people, you gotta you gotta be a good conversationalist, and you kind of gotta be good at drawing things out because personally. I don't like when people have the format where they send you, you know, here's the six questions I'm going to ask you and all of that, because I find it stifling myself. But um, but I think those are things that you have to decide for yourself, like how you're going to operate and what's what's the best use of your talents. And are you good? Are you good at living or are you not so good at living? Do you right. need lots of notes? Do you not need lots of notes? Yeah, I always say if you're going to do an interview based podcast, go do your homework and go listen to some Oprah because she good, you know, she, she's really good at asking questions, preparing for interviews, you know, listen to this American life and, you know, those top tier shows that are at, that are interview based and don't just listen for enjoyment, listen as homework and study how these people are interacting with each other. And, and you can just practice doing that. And you'll learn very quickly that being a, a good interviewer is all about being a good listener. So that's a place to start. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And and the whole point is like, if you're going to have guests on and you're going to do interviews is your job is to extract out of them all the really interesting things that they have to say and the insights they have and make it, you know, you, you're representing your audience, like um, saying, oh, I wish... I wish they'd ask this question or I'd love to know about that. Exactly. I can't tell you how many times I've been like, sitting there doing an interview and it, my guests will say something and I go, well, I already kind of know the answer to this, but I just know that my audience would kill me if I didn't ask you this, this, and this, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. So so putting on your, um, take out your crystal ball and you know, put on your, your wizard's hat or whatever and look, and where do you see podcasting going? Well, not to be a glass half empty pessimist kind of person, but I've lately been a little worried about the, the kind of overtake of, 
I don't know if it's the Spotify versus Apple war going on or what, but the kind of overtake of paid content now on podcasting platforms, you know, where a lot of content is now being kind of hidden behind paywalls. And I don't know if I see that changing, which makes me, makes me really sad. I'm a, I'm just a full believer that yes, you should have, you know, a paywall up if you want to have people get bonus content or, or ad free listening, but let's try to keep podcasts at its core. It was, this is free content for the world. So that that's one future of podcasting where I see, you know, more money coming in, which isn't a bad thing, but I think it is going to get a little bit harder for the little guy. However, if these big, you know, companies keep putting all these paywalls in front of their content, I think that could be an advantage to the little guy as well. Who's like, no, let's keep it free. Let's make it easy for people to find free content as well. Uh, but certainly podcast isn't going anywhere. The quality is just getting better and better. The popularity is getting, you know, the awareness of the amount of people listening to podcasting is getting better and better. So um, it's really such an amazing time for people to get in because it, it's content that is searchable, it's findable, it's long form. So you can actually grab people's attention and keep their attention and build their trust. So many advantages to that. And, and that's not changing anytime soon. Yeah, listen, great. Thank you. Those are great insights. And yeah, I agree with you on the uh, uh, the move to to paid. Uh, but but I think in some ways it'll be self defeating if so many people go there because there's only so many subscriptions somebody's going to have to a particular exactly. you know provider or wh whatever it is. And I do think that there's a huge appetite still for you know free content that has good uh, good quality uh, insights in it. Uh, so that's the interest. I think the my my biggest fear, I'll be honest with you, is we saw this with with uh, with blogs in the past where, you know, people put effort into it, high quality, great content. Then everybody decided, oh, I need to have a blog. Quality went down. You know, I need to post on LinkedIn all the time, every day, all day, every day. And then there's just garbage and noise being pumped out there. I, I, I have a feeling that we're going to, going through something similar with podcasting and not to denigrate anybody's podcast but i think there's a lot being put out there that haven't that aren't of the quality the thought hasn't gone in it's 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 checking a box and i and i hate people doing things just to check a box because you're never going to create good quality uh content or anything mm. if it's just a box check yeah exactly you know i try to encourage people what what platform do you have the most fun on yourself is it facebook instagram do you enjoy listening to podcasts or, or watching youtube what's the place that you get personally the most enjoyment with? All right, now go make that your home and go become a master of that one platform because there's so much to learn about each and every platform, how to optimize it, how to maximize it, how to get good quality out there. Go do that first. So if that's podcasting, great. You know, that's where I found my home and I love it more than anything. And, you know, thanks to that, I don't have to be everywhere. You know, my social media is like, terrible and and I'm not everywhere yet I still have a thriving business because I've really mastered that one place you know and if you want to expand from there that's great but start out with that one platform that you love and go master that one place yeah no I, I couldn't agree more because if you're everywhere in some ways you can end up being you're nowhere, nowhere. exactly yeah, exactly um well, listen samantha this is fantastic thank you so much for joining us today all of samantha's information is going to be below this podcast but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business yeah well if you enjoyed what i had here to say today well that didn't make any sense that was a terrible sentence <laughs> can we cut that out <laughs> If you enjoyed, you know, anything that you learned here today, this is what I do, you know, every day with my students at Pineapple Podcast Academy. So if you want to learn more about starting a podcast from scratch, getting mentorship from me personally, you can find information at pineapplepodcasting.com. Yeah, and I would encourage people if you're considering uh, starting a podcast, please do check out uh, Samantha. It's much better to get to to avoid a lot of the pitfalls things we talked about here earlier uh, kind of shortcut your way in a little bit um, Samantha is going to be able to save you a lot of those heartaches and maybe maybe by going there and learning at the beginning you can actually hit the ground running and enjoy what you're doing as opposed to you know maybe not have the greatest experience and then we'd lose out on a fantastic podcast 
Exactly. The world needs to hear your voice. So come on, let's share it. Absolutely. All right. Listen, thanks, Samantha. Thank you all for watching or listening or both. And I will see you again really soon. Thank you. Yeah.